What's up everybody? Welcome back to another installment on The Freak, our 1999 Honda Civic hatchback that we're making your rear wheel drive. But before we get started, I wanna give a huge thank you to those of you that supported our JDM Supply merch drop. It is nearly sold out at this point. There are some things left. Head on over to the throttle store online, get it before it's gone. Thank you guys so much that support us. We appreciate it. And I'll be honest, this is my favorite drop so far. I've been wearing this stuff nonstop. That's how these are gonna go. Kind of hard to see in here, but you get the idea. So two 90 degree elbows that are gonna allow the fuel to pass through our aluminum plate and a nice kind of direct route over to there where they will hook up. Uh, now I have to go underneath the car and tighten them down. One thing I wanna just before we get too far along is that I saw in the last video, a lot of people were really triggered by the fact that I'm putting AC in a track car and I'm putting carbon fiber headlight covers and they don't think that those jive with one another. So first of all, this is my car and that's what I wanna do. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I want you guys to understand this car is gonna have a DOT headlight in it. As you can see here, there are headlights in the car and those headlights are gonna stay in the car. The carbon fiber covers from Technocraft are solely there for when we go to track days and stuff. They're not, I don't intend to drive around town with carbon fiber light replacements. So I'm not sure where anybody got that idea. I never said that in the video. Yeah, they're gonna look cool. So we'll probably pop them in for like some events and stuff. If we go to an event, we'll probably put them in because at the end of the day, this is, the majority of the time that this car is gonna see is at the track. That's the purpose for building it for us. So having the functionality of a real headlight in the car, in case we wanna drive it somewhere, we can. We'll literally spend 10 minutes, pull the front bumper off and pop those in uh, for a little bit of weight savings. I will say something else. The vintage air AC system that we're putting in weighs in at a scale shattering 21 pounds. So the AC system, is a negligible amount of weight. Am I worried about weight in this car? I'm not. This car weighs nothing. You can ask Ricky. We, we've been moving it around and it is literally the lightest car in our shop. And it's not even close. Like, you can push it with one finger. Uh, those of you that don't live in California, don't understand how hot it is when you're sitting in a race car waiting to get to the start line in the paddock or simply moving the car in and out of the shop. I want AC, so we're gonna put it in. So deal with it. Deal with the AC, but Nice. And it's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go underneath this car and tighten up these bulkheads, and we're gonna move on to mounting the uh, fuel pump and filters. created was a plate here and so this has our Bosch 044 type pump on it and then two Dietchworks filters we've got a 100 micron and a 10 micron so from our fuel cell we'll have an inlet line it's gonna go into this filter through the filter turn the corner go through the pump the pumps gonna be pulling the fuel through uh, into this 90 banjo over to here through this filter and then out and we'll probably run a 180 or a 120 out of here um, probably 180 is going to be too tight for this and then this is going to go up to the front of the engine and feed the engine with fuel and then we'll have a return line from the fuel pressure regulator that will go back to the fuel cell. fuel pressure regulator I've got a dash 6 fitting just spun on here uh, and our return line on the bottom and we have also our Haltech flex fuel sensor we want to be able to run E85 in this car so this is a must but one thing I have to do before we mount this is make sure that the uh, wiring harness that we have which I haven't introduced to you guys yet so you're gonna get to see that from afar it's a pretty special piece and I'll introduce that in an upcoming video we want to make sure that the location we place this allows us to plug our engine harness in so I need to make sure there's enough lead on the harness to reach where we want to put this. So I'm going to sort of roughly lay out the harness real quick where it's going to sit and that'll tell us how much uh, room we have to play with this thing.
see we got our hybrid racing fuel pressure regulator mounted. What's got there, Mick? All right, well, I just whipped up this piece of aluminum. It's a one by two, but this will also obviously be blacked out, but it's basically gonna get nut inserted to the firewall like this. Now what it does is it, it pushes our uh, brake and clutch reservoirs away from this flap, this flange here. So it's gonna move them out here and it's gonna bring them up high enough that they'll be able to gravity feed our master cylinders. Uh, so I just went ahead and drilled a bunch of holes, nut inserted it, put two big holes through the front and small holes for M6s in the back that allow us to bolt it directly to the firewall. And then these will bolt on just like this. Boom, boom, boom and then all of our reservoirs will sit reside there. So kind of a pretty simple solution. I was gonna use a piece of one by one, but I decided to go with this one. I think it looks a little better. It actually brings the canisters out a little further off the firewall, so it should work out great. We're gonna take a break from the uh, brake reservoir setup because Brendan from Dime is here. And if you guys aren't familiar with Dime, they are a, how do you wanna say it? Like a plumbing and fluid yeah, system a company? And, you know, hose fitting company. But the difference is that we, we have this kit that we produce. You invented this, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you also got some pretty nice accolades for this system as well, right? Yeah, we got some awards from SEMA last year, Innovator of the Year, and launch pick competition last year. We're no big deal. Again this year. <laughs> so, yeah, people, people have liked it so far. Okay, so Brendan, you have a lot of cases here. These are really cool plastic cases with a lot of fittings inside. Yep. But maybe just explain why you have all of these cases. So. We have a, uh, a case for each size because every size fitting only fits the size, you know, whatever on your vehicle. So to properly size it, get the dimensions, as well as to get the, you know, the bend angle of the, the hoses. So this is say what, a dash 10 a dash or something? 10. So okay. the blue is a, the Super Legra family of materials, which is this Kevlar coated, okay. yep. Kev Kevlar braid PTFE. Yep. And this, the same size as that, so sure. rep represents how far you really should operate it. Yep. So anything beyond what would pop that apart yeah, so is probably too it, tight it, of a radius. Yeah. One thing I love that you're doing is the, I don't know what you call this crimping, but is it swedging or I'm not it's sure. Crimping. So it's a crimp. And most of the, the fittings that I build here are more traditional style where you, you know, yourself, screw yeah. them together yourself. So this is actually going to be an upgrade for this car if we do all the crimp fittings. I don't know if that was your intention or not, but yeah, and it will last forever, and you're never going to have a have a, a problem with the you know, leaking between the, the hose and the fitting. It's yeah, very very reliable. Connection. Sometimes they sweat a little bit. Yeah, yeah like, so I'll make something similar to that one. You put them together like this. You make sure all of these are lined up because this represents like a, a certain clocking angle. So right, you make right, sure right. That all of the the spines. Are, are lined up like that. So this one's a 90 to a 180. So I'll grab a 180 from the box, and that's pretty much how it is. But you see this one has a clocking angle. Fitting is we don't use the swivels because it's another leak point. The dial, which allows you to, and we have to shorten it a little bit now because we added some length. When you have the dial, that allows you to clock it in the orientation that you need it. And then you can also change the, the length, lock it off. Yep. So now to tell you know, wherever you are, and I have customers in you know, Asia and Europe and Australia, that they take this specification, which is a, a AN 1090, the AN 10180, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 segments at 90 degrees plus 10 millimeters. Upload that on the website, and then we'll produce the real one, crimp it, test it, and ship it wherever it's going to go the same day. And you'll get a motorsport grade hose mm -hmm. no matter where you are. All right, well, Brendan went ahead and whipped up these two lines. Again, 120s here to the bulkheads that I installed previously. Brennan and I have been working on the feed and return lines under here, and we've come up with a pretty cool little way of doing our return line. We're actually gonna put a little bulkhead, male-to-male -male bulkhead on the return line so we can crack that 
line off uh, if needed and we can drain the fuel tank if we need to do that if we want to do like a full change over to e85 or vice versa race fuel um, we could pump the system out by breaking the line off back here just a little bit of serviceability and that's one of the nice things about his kit is that you kind of start thinking about these things because you have those options and you may not follow that otherwise so really nice to have brendan here this <laughs> is definitely something I don't know that I would have thought of straight away. And now, uh, Brendan's trying to get the lengths right. So this is where we're gonna put our little bulkheads here. And these are gonna disappear down into the factory uh, brake and fuel line encasement here, which is like, it's a plastic track. So he's trying to figure out how to terminate it into there basically, and then we'll pull the lengths off of the chassis for the rest of the hoses. All right, well now that the fuel has made its way up front, theoretically, we're working on and these are our two brake lines that we left in the two hard lines our fuel line is going to exit here and return here through this as i notated earlier kind of hard to see but you can see where we have the fitting right here on a 90 degree at our flex fuel sensor so we've got that line figured out but now we got to make an s-shaped line that's going to come out of our flex fuel sensor and up to our fuel pressure regulator Try and get this to, to yep. do what you want. So. so again, to reiterate, so with your blue connector, guys, your what do you call those exactly? The segments. The, the segments. We could crank on that thing and make it work, right? Yeah. But so it's gonna pop your segment you apart. It, it doesn't look like it's kinked, but inside it'll be like yeah, like stagnant like that. You know, you get the fittings right, get yeah. the length right, and you're good to go. It's probably the worst place to have a fuel restriction between the yeah, for layers sure. And the right. regular to the rail. All right, so you added a little bit of length to that hose, it looks like. So we're gonna yeah, loop it down. We're gonna have to loop it down and sort of bring it back. This is our return line. It's gonna basically end up looking something like that there, and it'll send it right on back to the fuel cell. He installed a 90 at the bottom on the return as you can see right uh, right there he ran the 90 around the 85 sensor and then down to here so we got a 150 on here we're running it under the frame rail oh that's nice let me get that angle right this will hang right in there almost like it was meant for it that looks nice too i haven't finished the process of actually v-mounting the car yet but we're missing one very important part and that is a hole in the hood as you can see here, the air is going to come through that guy, but it has nowhere to go. It's going to hit the top of the hood and create a pocket of positive pressure underneath the hood, which is going to lift the front end, which is the last thing you want. And it also is going to leave all that hot air inside the engine bay. I already thought this through a long, long time ago and actually had this vent. This is actually a vent made for a Mitsubishi Evo. This is actually a vent made for a Mitsubishi Evolution. I am repurposing it for our Honda Civic. What it's gonna allow us to do is actually take that air that's coming through the front bumper, up through the inner cooler, and out the hood in a nice fashion and look really nice. So this part was already uh, matte black. I sent this off with the car to the paint shop so that we could get it matched up because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do the fabrication until after the car was sprayed. So what we'll do now is we'll go back, we'll cut the hole in the hood nicely and we'll place the vent in, we'll panel bond that into the carbon fiber hood and it'll be as though it was meant to be. Because we're mounting our reservoirs down here, the, keep in mind these have not been painted yet, they will be black, uh, but for test fitment purposes, they are still shiny. Uh, we did have to cut a hole in the hood there to clear the lid. As you can see, the hood closes nice without touching. We also clearance the spot here and a spot here for the valve cover and our intercooler pipe that runs right there, our intake pipe. A lot of work in progress. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and smoke a hole in this beautiful hood so we can start uh, planning out the uh, mounting of this guy here. nerve-wracking anytime you're cutting a random hole inside of a really nice finished part it's always a little bit uh, I don't know I don't like doing it but as you can see it's not pretty but it's a hole that's what she said <laughs> 
and you can see through the hole that there's our intercooler. Now that we've got this hole, we can sort of start opening it up. All right, well, it's the next day. Brendan has just left with all of our measurements and lines and fitting measurements uh, after our little session. And as you can see here on the table, all the stuff is already here. Man, does it look epic. Top quality of how everything's labeled here on the fittings. It's pretty cool. As you can see, throttle, civic, regulator, return. So this is gonna come out of the bottom of our regulator as, and hook up to our return line bulkhead. All of these lines have a notation on them. This isn't gonna wipe off, rub off. This is actually etched in the fitting. Brendan at Dime PSI actually wanted to give you guys a coupon code for 50% off his kits that you saw us use to measure all these lines. 50%, not 15, 50. That's a huge discount. Just super awesome of him. Uh, he's a huge fan of our channel and he wants to support us. So uh, if you guys are interested in getting one of these kits for your shop, save time, save money with your technicians when you have this type of kit available to you on the shelf, Click the link in the description down below and use the code that's right here on the screen. It'll also be in the description. Thank you, Brendan, for working with us on this project and providing our supporters with an awesome discount on your product. Before I get started on that, I also received this piece today. And man, this thing looks like it belongs in a freaking art installment somewhere. Um, this thing is beautiful. So the reason why I chose to work with Rob from Track Tough on this project is because he builds beautiful parts for these cars. But besides that, he's also very knowledgeable and he's been a huge help for me with figuring out all the systems on this car, how things function, where to put sensors and where not to put sensors in the proper locations and things like that. He's a very knowledgeable guy, aside from being a wicked talented fabricator. Look at these welds. So one other thing I really love about Track Tough is he actually uses all factory parts for seals and gaskets and stuff when he builds stuff like this. So this machine part here is actually grooved for the factory O-ring that sits right in there like that. This is gonna sit right here. Now I need to remove this in order to get this to sit in there properly. As you guys saw in the uh, time lapse, I did, cut the, uh, I did cut the hood scoop in, you can see here. Now mind you, this is just a rough cut and it's being held in with um, just some clamps for now. But as you can see, we've got full clearance. And man, does it look cool. You just see our, uh, our intercooler through there. We'll probably use some other materials to uh, lengthen this scoop down to the intercooler to make sure that we've got a really nice passage for the air to go through the bumper, up out the top, and through the radiator and out the bottom. It's time to start plumbing this thing. So one thing that we never really updated was, I did go ahead and throw our PVC filler tube in. This will have hose clamps on either end, but I wanted to get the, the hose sized up. Obviously we'll clean up the ends and make everything nice and straight and polished looking. Um, so this is gonna be our filler. And then what I don't know that I ever showed you guys was the, um, the Sparco fuel door. So we have our regular Civic fuel door which hides the Sparco race fuel door. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. It actually fit inside the Honda Civic fuel location really well. And once it's closed, you don't even know it's there. So very streetcar-ish, which is what I really like about it. So we got all that buttoned up. It's time to move to the bottom.
those of you with a keen eye probably noticed that our drive shaft is in. So huge shout out to Oceanside Driveline. We're lucky enough to have a uh, drive shaft expert just about 25 minutes away from our shop, which is pretty cool. We basically just dropped off the S2000 shaft, said we needed X length, and they went ahead and whipped up this, this jammer for us here uh, with uh, M8 bolts on either end. And it's got like a slip yoke here on the front. And uh, this should be good up to, he said like around a thousand horsepower. So we're not gonna make anything anywhere near that. So we should be in good shape. So thank you guys over at uh, Oceanside Driveline, especially Jeff. And I can't wait to put this thing to use. Dime PSI lines are all buttoned up. They turned out perfect as expected because his tool is that good. Uh, it allowed us to make these lines and then have them shipped. I got them in two days and now everything's plumped. We also got our track tough swirl pot in. And as you can see, I got some measurements over there. He's gonna be making the bubbler pot for us. Uh, that's gonna be plumbed over to the corner over there. And uh, our cooling system should be buttoned up at that point. Our oiling system is done as well. Thank you guys so much for all the love on these freak videos. It means the world to me. Uh, this is a project that I've been wanting to do for over 10 years and it's now come to fruition and it's almost done. We just have a couple more weeks left to get this thing fired up. So stay tuned guys, the next video is gonna be fire. We appreciate you hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments down below. Drop them thumbs up. We like it all. We'll see you next time.